let's talk about striking the drum. The first thing you'll want to do before anything is to take off any jewelry that you have on your hands and your wrists. This is to keep the drum heads from getting dense and also to protect your jewelry. Now, I'd like to show you several tones that this beautiful drum is capable of making. Let's start with the bass tone. The bass tone is the big resonant sound that the drum is capable of making. When you're holding your hands to make the bass tone, we'll start with one hand. If you turn your hand over and look at them, your fingers should be together, your, your thumb should stay in. If you look at your hand at an angle, it should be relatively straight. You want to avoid curving the hand up like this. If you do that, you open yourself to injuries here on these knuckle joints. Just as you look at your hand, nice and flat. When you're holding your hand, it should be firm, but still relaxed. Now, some people, when they do the bass tone, they do it right dead center, which is correct. It creates one kind of bass tone. Other people play the bass tone over on this part of the drum, which is just off center. And so if you look at your wrist, your wrist should stay even with the edge of the drum. This is also called the rim of the drum. And as you strike the drum, this is the important part. When you strike the drum, instead of bringing your hand down and keeping it on the head, crushing the drum, what you'll want to do instead is, as you strike the drum, let your hand bounce off of the head so that the drum can resonate, like this. You can see I'm using the full weight of my arm. When you're using both hands, the key with this technique is that each hand sounds like the other. The, the term for this is called evenness of tone. And so, as you practice, practice allowing each hand to strike and sound identical. That's the goal. One thing you'll notice as I play is that I'm not using any extra motion. I'm not lifting my hand up really high. I'm not swiping my hand back like this. I'm not coming in at an angle like this. Just the motion is straight up and down. And so the goal as you do these tones, not only to have evenness of tone, but also efficiency of motion using as little energy as possible to achieve the result that you're looking for, which in this case is a great sound. Please make sure as you play that you are still breathing. Sometimes when people are learning something new, the tendency is to hold your breath. Very good. The second tone that we're going to work on is called the open tone. And so, if you look at your hands, this is the position that we were just in for the bass tone. To get to the open tone, what I like to do is back my hands up halfway and then tilt wrists in. Let your elbows drop, be comfortable. I want you to notice right now that my thumbs are far away from the edge of the drum. This is so that I don't accidentally smack this, this knuckle joint right here, which there's a nerve there. And if you happen to strike that on the side of the drum like this, you will uh, feel it in the most terrible of ways. And so when you're doing this tone, this is the open tone, this is the bass tone, you're aiming for this part of your hand. And you're also aiming for the fleshiest parts of your hands and fingers. And so, again, as you're holding your hands for this, they should look flat, avoiding curving your hands up like this. That 
will lead to an injury. Keep your hands nice and flat. Now for this open tone, you can bend, bend your wrists a little bit more. And as you strike the drum, you'll notice that the tone is a little bit more of a hollow tone. It's more of a direct sound. As you're playing this, you'll want to be very careful never to hit the drum at an angle like this. Instead, make sure that you're, again, hitting the drum straight up and down so that your hand is just connecting with the head itself. Being mindful of your thumbs. So we have the bass tone, we have the open tone, and then we have one tone that is called the slap tone, one of the most challenging tones to make. When you do a slap, you have to be very careful not to injure your hand. Sometimes it takes quite a while to master this slap, and so if you don't get it right away, uh, you just have to be very easy with yourself. When you're doing this, you can spread your fingers out a little bit. You can keep your thumb still out away from the edge of the drum. And the motion that you're making is more of a whipping motion. And you're trying to connect with this part of the hand on the head. Also connecting with this part at the same time. So you're hitting both of these at the same time, creating this effect of actually making the head sound like, like a pop. Open tone. bass tone. Open tone. Slap. A fourth tone you can make. This is a really easy one. It's called a muted tone. What you want to do is place one hand on the drum and your other hand just strikes the head muting the, the sound completely. You can do variations on this where you're just playing with one finger, depending on what sound you're, you're going for. A full hand, a bass muted sound, even a slap muted sound. Then we have the tone called the flam. When you do a flam, the idea is that you're throwing both of your hands onto the drum at the same time. What I do is I lift one hand a little bit higher so that there is this widening of the sound, if you will. Listen for a moment. The sound is brat, brat. And yes, that is the technical term, brat. If you want to do a fun exercise, you can try lifting one hand higher and then lift the other hand higher on the next stroke. And this will get you used to making flams coming from both sides.